How's it going, everybody? It's uh, 7.30 in the morning. Just thought I'd pop into the old power saw shop. It's getting warmer out. Look, you can't see my breath. Um, it's going to be around 20, 22 degrees today Celsius, which is, I don't know, in the 70s. The weather changes here just like that. Uh, you go from snow on the ground to wearing shorts within like a two-week period. Uh, ditches are open. All the water ran off, so... Um, my neighbor actually, there's a spot at my tree line that blows in. My neighbor opened that up with his uh, yard tractor. As soon as he uncorked that, literally my yard's almost dry now. So, hope you guys can hear those birds. Anyways, and for those of you that were asking, uh, my wife's happy and healthy and comfy and just trying to keep her, uh, trying to keep her as comfy as I can, uh, all things considered. So thank you for those of you that have been asking and, and reaching out. I appreciate it. Um, just a ton of support right now. And, uh, it means a lot to me. What are we doing today? Well, um, I've had this 288 XP light. Uh, this is a 1989 Husqvarna 288 XP light. Um, it is slightly scored up, but not, not terrible. Um, the saw still has compression. I'm just pulling the decomp. This thing's not blown up, but it was parked. Now, if you guys look, this saw's in pretty rough shape. Uh, the plastic's really haggard. Um, broken parts. I don't know about the muffler, but the muffler's missing. It has no chain adjuster. But it's still a complete saw. So, I've been wanting to do this saw for quite a while, but it's like, it's missing so many parts, I need another complete saw to get this thing running. Um, looks like the crankshaft, piston, cylinder, everything's good on this saw, but I've never taken it apart. And uh, I like these saws. People love or hate these saws. Now, me personally, they're not terrible. They are a little bit clumsy. Um, the anti-viable on them is usually kind of mushy. You guys can see these are kind of the last of the big rubber anti-vibe saws. Um, but I like them. I've, I've always enjoyed a, a 281, 288, 181. Um, you guys have seen a uh, friend of the channel, TK, sent us this one. This is a mint 181. Look at this thing. I still can't believe he sent this to me. Um, this one is a 1985, 181. It does have a later 281, 288 uh, side cover on it, or recoil, but other than that, friends, this thing is mint. It starts and runs like brand new. I really, really like this saw. And uh, I'm not gonna port this one. This one, some saws are too nice to port, and this is definitely one of them. Um, this saw is very strong. It pulls a 32 really nice. You guys have seen me run on this channel, run it on this channel. And uh, I'm going to keep this one stock, kind of as my, you know, my test saw. Okay, so I'm just going to throw this back up here. Now, I do have another 181 in a box that was blown up. We took that one apart. Eh couple months ago, I needed a few little bits and pieces for that saw. I was going through today. Uh, I had to swap the cases over. And uh, we're going to jump back into that one soon. Uh, I want to finish the 038 Magnum. But for the time being, let's talk about 288. So, friends, you have a saw like this. That's This thing's pretty rough. I'm not going to lie. It's, uh, it's ugly. You know, and pretty much every piece of plastic on it is chipped, broken, scratched. The handle looks horrible. It needs AV mounts. But it's, you know, a fairly complete saw. Everything's there under the hood. Let's have a look-see here. Okay, this is a low-top model. Everything's there, but it, it's rough, right? Now, I have bits and pieces to kind of put one of these together. Now, what I did, friends, is... I did something I've never done on this channel. I ordered a Farmer Tech uh, saw kit, a 288 saw kit. I'm gonna get you guys set back up here. Let's uh, let's unbox this and kind of let's have a look at it. 
Okay, friends, I've pulled everything out of the box. I'm going to move one little box full of smalls. I'll put it over here on the bench. Let's unpackage some of this stuff and see. Um, you guys you guys have been asking me to do a Farmer Tech kit on this channel for what seems like ever. So let's go over some of this stuff and show you what you get. This is the 288 kit. I'm sure I mentioned that already, but okay. First things first. I hear the quality of this stuff is getting better. This handlebar is actually very taut. And uh, I have bought these before, friends. And I had one. I pinched the saw slightly. And when I, I pulled on it, which you shouldn't do, but I did, I bent the bar like a pretzel. Okay, so handlebar seems good so far. I'm just going to give you guys my... My thoughts on it. I'm going to bring you in close and show you part by part. We'll open them together. Here's the top cover. Uh, high top. It seems stiff. Um, it's shiny. It, it looks nice. So there you guys go. These high tops are available now uh, through Farmer Tech. I'm more of a low top man myself, but we'll, uh, we'll run this as a high top. Now, friends... I pre-opened this just to look through it. This is the only damage in this whole package. This took about two months to come here. I did purchase this. Um, that way I could be open, honest, and truthful and show you guys what I actually think. So um, I paid for this kit. I'll fix this, no big deal. It's There's a little crack right here. Okay, so from what I can see, this high top seems nice. It, it looks good. It's well finished. There's no burrs. So... Uh, so far, I'm happy with what I'm seeing. I haven't really looked over much of this. Here's the recoil. We'll just cut it open. And again, I've purchased aftermarket recoils before, and they're, uh, they leave something to be desired. Okay, here's your air deflector. Again, this, this seems like a factory piece to me. It's stiff but flexible. Uh, I used to buy these and they were so brittle they would crack when you're putting them on. Uh, so air deflector seems good. Recoil seems okay. Uh, these either work or they don't. Sometimes they're a little questionable. So it feels fine. So got lots of spring tension. Okay, so so far, the recoil's good, top cover. We'll go over the we'll go over the stuff that I mean matters. It all matters, but is there anything better than a good sharp knife? I don't think so. Okay, chain brake again, friends. I have dealt with these in the past. They're uh, they're a little bit questionable. I'm just gonna print you guys a little bit higher here. Okay, um, the 272 chain brakes I found to be rubbish. Um, let's see, does it reset easily? Eh. <laughs> we'll, we'll see, friends. I, I find these chain brakes usually... Uh, that thing's really stiff, but it works, right? So... The paint looks nice on it, I will say that. It's shiny, uh, not a lot of orange peel in it. So, again, uh, from what I see, friends, I used to use Farmer Tech back in the day when I was first starting out. The quality seems to have gotten better. We won't know about this chain break until we run it on the saw. Okay, handle assembly. I'll just cut it right here. Okay, friends, so we have more damage. Um, the throttle assembly is broken. I probably, I have a good throttle assembly on my OEM saw, so we're gonna have to replace that, unfortunately. Um, it is what it is. These things do get some damage in shipping, and it seems like this one. Mounts seem okay. 
fuel line is pre-installed, so this handle feels OEM to me. It's got the right curvature on it. Yeah, it looks nice. It looks like it's got a nice, nice air filter or, or fuel filter inside. So, yeah, there you go. And that piece just broke right off. So we will have to replace that. I probably have a spare in my parts bin. Other than that, I mean, whatever. It is what it is, friends. I've had this thing too long to get warranty anyways. So I kind of expected broken parts. And we have a few, but nothing major so far. Okay. So there's the handle. Here, let's just keep going. This comes with a double dog setup. I wish they'd make full wraps for these old saws. And it's funny, these have <laughs> OEM stamps on them. 501-9181-01. I wonder if that is the factory part number. Let's see grab this one yeah wow friends these are an exact copy of the oem they have the same stamp in the same place so i don't know if i like that um putting factory marks on aftermarket parts is kind of questionable to me because it could get harder and harder it could get harder and harder to tell the difference these dogs seem stiff they're uh they're hard and heat treated by the sounds of them so Again, good, good job. Okay, let's... This package here has all your nuts, bolts, fasteners. I won't pre-open these because I'll end up losing them on me. But yeah, so you get all of your fasteners and parts. Each, looks like each sub-assembly is put into uh, a different bag, which is handy. Here's your, uh, here's your muffler bolts. Different screws and fasteners, crankcase, here's the ones for your handle, which is nice. I like the way they did that. Makes it way easier to assemble it. So, we'll stuff these back in here the best that we can. Okay, let's get, I got one more box here, friends. And then let's get to the heart of the machine, okay? Let's get to let's get to the part that matters, the engine, crankcase, cylinder. I hope you guys are enjoying this content. Um, we'll talk about this when when we're done, but what we're gonna do with this. Okay, here is the carburetor. It's stamped. It's one of these ones that are stamped. Let's see if you guys can see that. HLIC 2108A is what it says on it. Looks nice inside. It's well machined. Again, I do have an OEM carb, so if we got to swap one, I'm hoping this carburetor works, friends. You guys know that I've had, I have my thoughts on aftermarket carbs. Um, I've had a lot of companies ask me to try their aftermarket carbs, but um, I don't know, friends. I might buy a sampling of aftermarket carbs and try all of them. It's rare I get one that works. Now, I'm very particular on carburetors, so uh, good enough is not good enough on a ported saw. It's got to be right, so kind of nice, uh, your, your high top style air filter. It's kind of squishy there. I don't know if the factory ones are like that. I've never had a high top 288. Oil pump with the seal already installed. Here's your clutch. Uh, this one comes with a three spring clutch, which I prefer. Let's open this up. Comes with a 387 pin. This clutch looks nice, so hopefully it works good. I'm not seeing anything I don't like, friends. Nothing looks rough. What's in this bag? Here, I'll move this box over so you guys can see. It's 
first thing in the morning, I'm just, I'm doing this off the cuff. Anti-vibes. What's in this? This is all, this is your, oh, it comes with the rubber O-ring for, or behind. Interesting. So friends, a lot of times these used to be missing on a lot of kits from what I've seen. Uh, it comes with the rubber O-ring on the oil pump and it looks like there's a spare one here, friends. So that's a good deal. I do stock those, so I buy them in 10 packs from my dealer. Here's your, uh, your uh, guide plates. Fuel and oil caps. Again, those will either work or they'll leak everywhere. That's how they go. Clap for your air filter. Here's your chain adjuster. Intake block, which I believe is the same as a 272 filter base. <laughs> Number plate with rivets, if a fellow wants to use that. I know what I'm going to do on that, but here's your uh, on off switch, uh, wear plate, and uh, choke. Decomp, oil strainer. A Farmer Tech spark plug. Oh no! Interesting. This is an NGK BP MR7A. So I'm guessing that's a real NGK spark plug. Um, I don't really like the aftermarket spark plugs, friends. They're uh, I've had a lot of problems with them. Okay, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Flywheel, eh, looks pretty nice, good tension on the springs here. Muffler assembly. Typical straight through with the pipe already installed in it. There's no baffle or anything in this. Looks okay. It's got some got some dings on it from shipping this this kit actually come out of Korea friends your uh, your extra mount so this has this has the extra mount on the front um, where is it here friends do I have one I have one anyways I'll show you guys later so yeah this has the extra mount if you want to run a long bar which really stiffens these up uh, your your coil trigger or your ignition trigger. Here's your coil. Miscellaneous gaskets and hardware. Let's see if yeah, these gaskets look nice. They look factory. This is a good deal. Two exhaust gaskets and a case gasket right here. I have these in stock, but we'll build this with what they sent. Okay, I'm gonna pack all this stuff up and show you the heart of the machine. Here is the crankcases. I am pleasantly, pleasantly surprised by these cases, friends. They are nice. They look good. They got nice paint on them. They're nicely machined. Um, the, the bar studs are punched in now. I know back in the day, and again, I used to, I used to watch, and I still do watch, uh, Walt's channel there, Fleet Command. I enjoy that channel. Um, he does things completely different than I do, and that's what I like. Uh, just a guy puttering in his shop, right? Making saws that work for him. And really, friends, that's what all this is about is I'm just puttering in my shop, doing stuff that works for me and for guys that I know. Uh, other people do things different, and, and that's okay. Um, if we all did everything the same and built the same saws, it would be pretty boring, wouldn't it? Or drove the same truck or any of that kind of stuff, so... Um, these are nice, really nice. Um, I'm impressed with them. Really no damage to the cases or paint or anything like that. They look good. Now, I don't pull cases together, so I'm probably going to have to pop this seal out to install my cases. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'll freeze the crank and see if I can drop it in on this side. These bearings, friends, feel like glass. I'm actually... I'm actually surprised at how nice they are. They feel good. I feel no slop. They're just smooth. I don't know what they are. Same with this side. Um, and they are marked. 
They aren't marked SKF. They are marked S and F. 6203P6 is what they say. Um, I think we're going to... Friends, I think what I'm going to do with this... I'll, I'll tell you guys what I'm going to do with this after. But so far, these cases look good. Okay, friends. Here's the crankshaft. Again, it looks nice. Um, I feel no slop in the bearing. Everything feels good. Now, here's my question. I know, what's he doing? I'm checking to see how hard it is. See, friends, right away, this crankshaft is pretty soft. Should we run it? I don't know. Put it in the, put a comment. Do you think I should run this crankshaft? I think I'm going to. And if it pulls up, we'll rebuild the saw. Um, all I'm doing here, friends, if this is if this is heat treated, and I do that, look, I shouldn't be able to scratch this rod. These are hard. This is soft. Now that's been a problem with Farmer Tech over the years. I don't use these cranks. Um, if I if I'm gonna use an aftermarket crank, I'd be more willing to go to go see Ryan at Wolf Creek and grab an NWP crank. I hear those cranks are good. They're hard. So um, I don't know. Should we use that crank? Okay, let's get to the heart of this. And then I'll let you guys go. Okay, cast iron ring. I don't mind these rings at all. Um, they don't they don't last as long as a caber, but they break in right away. They make good compression. Um, I don't mind these at all. Wrist pin. Right here. Here's the circlips. And again, these circlips don't have the tail on them anymore. I might use these. Um in the past, aftermarket circlips, they had these big long swoopy tails, they would pop and you'd blow your saw up. I have had that happen. Usually the, the circlip comes off and catches the transfer and you rip the cylinder apart. Here, let's see what we got here. Nice precise fit, a little on the loose side. Like I can move it a little bit, but it's not terrible. This piston is, it looks okay. I don't see any super rough castings on it. It doesn't look too, too bad. In a future video, friends, I'm going to compare three aftermarket 288 cylinders. And let's see, what do you get? What do you get when you buy aftermarket cylinders? Now, friends, I'm not going to lie, and, and it is what it is. I don't know what these cylinders cost if you buy them. This is probably a, in Canada, this is probably a $50 cylinder. This thing's rough. Um, lots of casting flash. Um, the ports are horribly chamfered. You see that in there? When I say chamfer, I'll point here with my knife. For those of you that are new, welcome. Right in this area, around all the ports, there should be a nice defined chamfer. Look, you guys see this? Look down in there. You see that rough spot? Right here. That's going to tear the piston up. Okay. Same thing. Look at the exhaust port. It's it's rough. You can see. You see the sharp spots right in here, friends. Right down in there. It's got. It's grabbing the light. Okay. So. Typical, I mean, it looks okay on the outside. It's typical aftermarket. Um, got some kind of Cyrillic stamp. I think that's Cyrillic. I don't know. If it's not, it's early in the morning. I'm only on my second cup of coffee. Okay, now let's check piston fitment. I will say though, one thing I like about Farmer Tech is they hone the living snot out of their cylinders, which means they should break in. Not bad. I wouldn't call that a, a poor fit. Um, so there you guys go. Um, it's not bad. 
Let's talk about what we're going to do with this thing. Um, this is kind of a project I bought so that you guys could take part in this and see. Um, so let's talk about that and let's have a discussion. What should we do with this power saw? Okay, friends, so that's the deal. That's what we got. Um, I've been looking for the right kit to, to build, and uh, I figured the 288 is up my alley. You guys know I am a Husky guy. I do run stills, Pioneers, Home Lights. Um, I like my Huskies, though. That's just, we all like what we like, and uh, I run a Husky. Although, if I'm going to do a, a bigger job and I want to get it done fairly quick, I usually grab my 461, the one that we ported on the channel, or I ported. I don't even know if I did that one on the channel, but... Um, so friends, here's what I'm thinking. And again, please post in the comments below. What do you guys think we should do with this saw? I kind of, my inkling is to build it stock with all the parts that they give me. And see, I don't think anything's missing at this point. Um, but I'd like to build this stock and put it together. And the reasoning for that, friends, is I get emails all the time from you guys. Tin Man, I need a bigger saw. I can't find one in my area. They just don't exist. I can identify with that, friends. I live on the prairies. There's not a lot of big timber here, and there's not a lot of logging here. Most of the logging here is pulpwood and firewood. And uh, guys log here, but it's firewood and pulpwood. You know, guys are cutting trees. They replant here and regenerate. Guys are cutting trees that are this big, generally. So they're running, you know, my 562 come from a firewood outfit. That's what guys are running, because really that's the perfect saw for what we cut. So... Big saws, really, they're not common here. I do have a lot of big saws or bigger saws, but let's face it, friends, a lot of them you guys have sent me, which, again, is just incredible. It means the world to me when you guys will send me a saw that I wouldn't generally have access to. And the rest of them I've collected over the years. If a big saw comes up for sale, if I can get there and can afford it, I, I pick it up. So, um, so the main thing is, a lot of you guys don't have access to big saws, so... Maybe an aftermarket parts kit is the answer for you. Um, I don't know how these run. I don't know if the carb's going to work. But um, in my mind, let's put this saw together and run it stock. Because let's face it, not all of you guys are going to port saws. And, uh, and that's okay. Um, let's run this saw stock, I think. And then see, is there any parts on it that aren't very good and... Are those parts available OEM or is there another option? Um, the only thing I don't like in this kit right now, I don't like the cylinder and I don't like the crank. Um, if I was going to build this for me, I would probably call Ryan at Wolf Creek and see if he can get me an NWP crank is where is the way I would go. Now, um, this is a budget friendly build, so therefore... I'm not going to spend any money on this saw unless I have to. So, um, in my mind, let's put this thing together stock and run it and see if it's a, a worthy saw to buy and build. If it's not, I'll let you guys know. If it is, I'll tell you guys. That's why I purchased this saw. And uh, I, don't, I don't really do sponsorships here. Um, other than Wolf Creek, uh, Ryan's a good guy. He's been good to me, and I hear nothing but good things. That's a fella. That's a fella that I'm gonna do business with every time because I believe in his company and, and I want to help him, and and he wants to help me. So, but other than that, friends, everything you see on this channel, uh, I buy and use and try out. So, um, this is the same case. I bought this saw to try it out. That way, I can be open and honest with you guys. So. Like I said before, post in the comments, what do you think we should do with this saw? Should we try and blow it up and port it? Or should I just put it together stock and run it? Which is probably what I'm going to do. If it is a good running saw, maybe we can port it just a little bit and see what kind of power it can take. Um, let me know. Anyhow, friends, uh, once again, thank you for all your support. This has been a, a trying time in our lives. Uh, my wife is comfy uh, in the house right now. I just thought I'd run out here this morning and uh, do a little video for you guys. Um, I really appreciate the support. It, it's It's been strange, friends, to not go get up and go to work. Uh, 20 years I've been at the same job, and it's hustle and bustle for me. And uh, 
It's interesting. Not not getting up every day and, and driving around chasing money. You guys know the deal. So uh, it means a lot that I have YouTube and you guys to hang out with. And uh, I appreciate it. Anyhow, friends. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.